good season. Very seldom is it one that's under 500. But Chuck, uh, you know, Knox has come from a nothing club. Last year, five wins. This year, seven. They feel very solidly that they can be a contender within the next two years. Today, a win would go a long way in that direction. We're down to the fifth tiebreaker to decide who wins between Pittsburgh and Houston. If the Oilers should beat the Eagles today and Pittsburgh should win, Pittsburgh wins the division. Any other developments, Pittsburgh does not win. The kick downfield by the Steelers is taken by Keith Moody. He's across the 10-yard line and the 20 breaks it across the 30, and Moody is out across the 35-yard line. So the Bills get the good kick return, something they've not had regularly throughout this season. Their kick returning has been poor. It is one of the weak areas of the football team. Moody has been a very strong kick returner out of Syracuse as a punt return man primarily up until this year. And there are the offensive set for the Bills. Joe Ferguson at quarterback. Terry Miller and Mike Collier start as the runners. Butler and Lewis, the wide receivers. Joe Ship, the tight end, in for, in for Ruben Gant. It's first and 10 for Buffalo. Ball at the Bills, 36 yard line, opening play from scrimmage. Ferguson going to put it up. He's looking. He's got a man open. He hits Jerry Butler, and Butler's across the 50. He's inside the 40. And Jerry Butler, all pro quality as a rookie, takes the ball down to the Steelers' 37-yard line. I think what you're seeing is what Chuck Knox thinks is his best opportunity to get ahead in this ball game. His personality used to be run the ball, throw the ball in passing situations. He can go back to Buffalo if he attacks Pittsburgh that way. You can see on the first play of the game that is not his philosophy. He's going to have a go at it. He's got two great wide receivers to go with. Butler, a spectacular first-year player from Clemson. Missed three games. Still has caught 46 balls now this season as a rookie. It's first and 10 for the Bills. End up. They go up the middle. Terry Miller spins off, and he gets ahead for maybe nine yards, but penalty markers come in off the play. I think it's a face mask, Don. Uh, we can't tell, but it looked to me like his head jerked. Donnie Shell looked like the guy who went after him. Shell, the strong safety, is a tough customer. Steelers have some bad news come to them this morning. Jack Ham, their all-pro linebacker, will not play again this season. He's out of this game. He's out of the playoffs. He'll not even make it to the Pro Bowl because of an ankle injury. Face mask. First down. L.C. Greenwood, number 68, the left defensive end. As you look at the Steeler defensive front, Greenwood. That big Joe Green, 75 in there. Gary Dunn, 67. John Banerjack, 76. The Bills are challenging in the opening moments of this game. First and 10 at the Pittsburgh 23-yard line. End up. Hitting off the left side for not much room is Mike Collier, a former Pittsburgh Steeler out of Morgan State. A big back. Cracks into the right side of the Pittsburgh defense. The offensive blockers for Buffalo have been unable to spring the running game this season. They're not quite sure why. There's some good people in there. Ken Jones, the left tackle, has become one of the most consistent. Two good guards in McKenzie and Delamalure. Delamalure consensus all pro. Willie Parker at center. Devlin's the right tackle. He's had some problems with penalties. A gain of only two. It's second down and eight now for Buffalo. 22-yard line to the Steelers. No score, first quarter, but the Bills are challenging. They're going to throw right now. Go, they go to the pit back to Collier. As the Steelers drop back into zone coverage, and Collier gets ahead down to the 20 yard line. Looks like Ferguson checked off, and he was yelling something over to one of his wide receivers. And it, had it not been for L.C. Greenwood, that play was long gone. Had a lot of people out in front of the runner. Greenwood, just with his speed, caught up and brought it down. Greenwood, Green, Dunn, Banizak. That's the defensive front. And we got some Buffalo Bills sneaking in there trying to be linebackers for Pittsburgh but Winston Lambert and Cole are the guys who are in there for Pittsburgh Joe Ship the tight end goes out loop a cone comes in so now the Bills go to three wide receivers at third down and seven Steelers line up with people right on the line of scrimmage now they drop back Ferguson on third and seven takes a look cocks his arm he's got a man it's caught down at the 12 yard line about the 13 now they're going to spot it a little farther back out. Looked like it might be short of the first down. His receiver made the play, loop a cone, but he was a little short of the first down, so it's going to be fourth and inches. Bills are going to try a kick here, it looks like, John. Well, you do want to get points on the board when you have an opportunity and if you have an opportunity first. Very few people have scored anything on the Steelers in the first right. quarter. Getting any sort of a lead, puts at least it puts it back on the Steelers.
So Nick Mickemeyer, who's been a real find for Buffalo, coming in as a free agent. 16 for 17 inside the 39 yard line. Snap the set down whistles blow the kick is up it looks like it's right there but there were whistles. Delay a game is called against Buffalo so instead of a good field goal the Bills will have to try it again instead of fourth and one that'll be fourth and six and take Mickemeyer just a bit farther back although he's still well within his range. 36 yards is still a chip shot but once you've kicked one you'd like to have those points on the board. So delay. Five yards, fourth down. Okay, we're going to have fourth down over once again. Interesting quote the other day from George Blanda, John. He said, inside the 30, he thinks that 90% of the field goal success is the holder. Now, you were a holder for 17 years. It does help to get it down there. You were quite a guy. <laughs> Nick Mickemeyer is blocked. A blocked field goal, and here comes Donnie Shaw with a football for Pittsburgh. So the Steelers make the big play. And how very, very <laughs> Buffalo Bills as we now see that play will go. It looked like there's a penalty marker down there, was not. It was a very alert play by Mike Minucci. You were talking about the holder. He puts the ball down. It's kicked just a little bit late and just a little bit low. Looks, looks to me like that's Joe Green. He slipped underneath the block, but Minucci alertly got out there or Shell might have run it in. So the Bills are stopped, and now Franco Harris takes the corner, and he is waxed by a rookie free safety. Jeff Nixon out of Richmond, who's playing some fine football. The Bills have four all-rookie players. They had a good draft. Hazlitt, Nixon in the defense. And here's the offense for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Brad Shaw at quarterback. Blyer and Harris are his starting runners. Great pass catchers. John Stallworth. 66 balls he's caught already. Lynn Swan, the other flank, is healthy again. Tight end Cunningham. Some changes in the offensive line. They've got people hurt there. Peterson and Corset, new starters on the left side for Cole and Sam Davis. It's second down and eight. Bradshaw goes to the run, right back to Franco. And Harris, the big back from Penn State, who needs just 135 yards to pass Jim Taylor and become the third all time leading rusher behind Jim Brown and O.J. Simpson, brings the ball out across the 35 to the 39 yard line. Defensively, the Bills go at the front three, and this has been a tough defensive unit. Ben Williams, Mike Kadish, Sherman White. In fact, in the last four games, the Bills have given up only one touchdown a game. Four linebackers in there for Buffalo. Isaiah Robertson, Jim Hazlitt, Shane Nelson, Lucia Stanford. It's third down and a long three for Pittsburgh. Bradshaw steps in, he lets her rip, and downfield it is broken up, so the Steelers will have to punt the ball to Buffalo. The Bill defense started out as the weak unit. The team was scoring a lot of points early in the year. Now the offense has gone a little soft, and the defense is one of the best Buffaloes put on the field in the last 10 years. And in the last two ball games, their offense has, has failed to score a touchdown. They have to do something today in order to stay in the ball game with Pittsburgh. Their defense seems to be playing pretty steadily, and I think they'll hold their own. Len Willis and Keith Moody are back deep for Buffalo. There is the Pittsburgh punter, Craig Colquitz. Never had one block. He's a two-tenth punter. Gets it away very quickly. One, two, and boom. And he really unloaded. Moody lets it take a hop. And it jumps into the end zone. Buffalo beneficiaries of a touchback. Although in hot pursuit was Anderson. And he almost got to the ball inside the five. Right now there's a break in the action here at Three River Stadium. We'll be back with a score. The Steelers nothing. The Bills nothing. Ferguson took the Bills right down the field, their first possession, throwing the football. That punt by Colt, but incidentally, was 61 yards, his longest of the season. Nothing there as the Bills try to go to the run. Harry Miller, who was an 1,100-yard rush last season as a rookie, he comes into this game with only 471 rushing the ball through 15 games, 3.5 per carry. You know... Don, to me, the indicative thing is that the three primary running backs for Buffalo are all under four yards of carry. The three for Pittsburgh are all over four yards of carry. I think that deals with the personality. Both teams throw the ball a lot, but when they have to run, Pittsburgh does a better job. Second down and nine now for Buffalo. No score, first quarter. Back to the run. Here comes Miller. He is a game breaker if we can get that first initial shot through the line. Lambert starts mixing up with Delon Malier. People would pay to see that one. 
I think they already have paid to see it. They'll see a lot of it throughout the rest of the afternoon. Buffalo took the ball right down the field as you joined us late. Got in field goal range. Nick Mickemeyer drilled it right up and through. But a delay of game call against the Bills sent them back five yards and they gave it the field goal. The next one was blocked by Joe Green. Free ball picked up by Donnie Shelb. And so there's no score on the board. Don, have you ever noticed how when things seem a little lackluster, Jack Lambert seems to create a situation that gets everybody off the floor and into the ball game? <laughs> uh, they've looked a little lackluster in the first series of plays. Offensively, they didn't move the ball. I kind of think he sits back and says, hey, we got to get something going. Chuck Knoll, since 1972, the first year the Steelers ever made the playoffs, he's had the most successful franchise in football, the most wins, and of course, three Super Bowl championships. Third down and a long seven for the Buffalo Bills. Ball at the 21-yard line. Three wide receivers are in. McCone goes in to join Lewis. Gary Butler. Ball is knocked down. And here's a penalty marker down. The Steelers were really coming. White White not happy about something. First thing you do is keep your helmet on, though, when they start swinging. White alternates a defensive end. Here's the call from Fred Silva. Then I guess it was Ken Jones. I'm offense number 72. The illegal use of the hands refused. Fourth down. Chappelle, Ken Jones. Tom. Well, a guy gets you know once a guy gets a reputation for holding a little bit, the officials seem to watch him very closely, and uh, that was a late call, but I'm sure it was a right one. Now Rusty Jackson's in the game to punt. Standing back at his seven yard line, he'll get the ball away from about the 11. Hits it downfield and not very well. It takes a funny hop up in the air and the ball is picked up and it's gonna be returned by T. Bell who will run it back into a buzzsaw. He doesn't fair catch. The ball is to the 44 yard line. Ken Johnson was down to make the play, so the Steelers with good field position go on offense for a second time. First and 10 when we return. Green of the Steelers once said they call me mean Joe Green but that Lambert he's so mean he doesn't like himself. There he is sitting at the edge of the bench in NBC Sports World with a salute to the champions coming up next Saturday at 4 Eastern time. Now we go first and 10. Franco Harris takes the ball up the middle. Ball's advanced to about the 48 yard line. A pickup on the play of three yards. It's going to be second down and seven. Terry Bradshaw came out of Woodlawn High School, Shreveport, Shreveport, Louisiana. The greatest high school quarterback people say they've ever seen came from that high school. Is on the field. And he wears number 12, but it's not Bradshaw. It's Joe Ferguson, who followed him four years later, broke every record Bradshaw set. Here's a handoff to Blyer. There's nothing there. The Bills close it down. That big nose tackle, Kadish, took on the All-Pro center. Mike Webster and the linebacker shot in to make the knockdown on Blyer who's having a good season averaging 4.8 yards a rush. There's Joe Ferguson. Probably the most underrated guy in the league John. I think he's got as much talent in his right arm as any quarterback in the game. I think he's been the he's been the effect of a poor defense for a number of years and I think their defense is now coming coming of what it is an old cliche but of age and I think in the future you'll hear a lot about Joe. Third down and seven for the Steelers. We'll see if Bradshaw's going to gun it now. He takes a deep drop. He's got time. He throws, and the ball is incomplete. Excellent coverage. Tony Green is the fifth defensive back for Buffalo. Was right on play. They went to their eighth stalwart. Mario Clark and Charles Rome starting at the corners. Nixon and Freeman, the safeties, and Tony Green comes in as a fifth defensive back. Bradshaw's saying, Coach Evan didn't work. Send me in a good one. I think we're getting a good indication of why people are scoring fewer and fewer points against Buffalo. They're playing tight man-to-man -man defense, and, they're, and they're, they're down three linemen are doing well at the line of scrimmage. Here's Colquitt's punt. His first was 61 yards. This is a good one that forces Moody into a fair catch at his 16-yard line. And so the Bills go on offense for a third time. There's no score on the board. The championship is on the line, and the Rose Bowl is Heisman Trophy winner Charles White in USC, ranked third, go against the number one Buckeyes of Ohio State. And that night at 8 o'clock Eastern time, it's unbeaten Florida State against Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl. Bills go to the run. They go to the big back, Mike Collier. 
But there's nothing there again. Joe Green having an all-pro season once again. He's been to the Pro Bowl ten times, or will be a ten-time Pro Bowler as of January. Was on the staff along with L.C. Greenwood. They're both 11-year veterans, but they're playing good football still. Banizak and Dunn, the right tackle and the right end. They'll alternate with Furness and Dwight White. Six linemen get regular playing time on Pittsburgh. Gain of only a yard at second down and nine. Steelers are getting a big rush on Ferguson, so he's got to be wary. He goes to a draw play. Hollier turns the corner and advance the ball up to about the 19-yard line. Steelers were playing pass all the way, so Ferguson went to a draw and didn't get there. Well, I, I think he hoped they were playing pass, but uh, Buffalo has not shown that they'll throw the ball inside their own 20. I think if they elect not to throw it, they'll be there all afternoon. Good point. But the Steelers have got a great intercepting team also. They got a great team. Lambert has <laughs> six interceptions himself, the middle linebacker. He's tied for third in the National Football League in interceptions as a linebacker. Got to have a go at him to stand a chance. Third down and seven for Buffalo. No score, first quarter. Ferguson steps in. Penalty markers down. The Bills were holding. The throw is complete to Frank Lewis, who is quickly put down by yet another Pittsburgh all pro, Mel Blunt. 6'4", 218 pounds, and he plays cornerback. So the penalty is going to go against Buffalo again. On a third and seven play, the Bills got cut, back forming the pocket. Five minutes and 39 seconds left to play in the first quarter. No score on the board in a game that Pittsburgh must win to take the AFC Central Division. John? The situation they're discussing right now, Don, is that they could force a fourth down and one, or they have their option to get them back there in their own, in a hole where they where they would either have to throw or be inside their own 10-yard line. I think they'll take the penalty. Here's Fred Silva. Offense number 72, base man, third down. Yep, they're going to set them back now in a face mask call against Ken Jones, and the ball is going to be inside the 15-yard line. So it'll be third down and 12 as Chuck Knox sees his team in a hole early. Not down, though, on the scoreboard. No score. Baltimore is leading the Giants 7-0 in the first quarter. I think they're coming after him. Third and 12, they're threatening the blitz. They're free, they're strong safety. Shell has four sacks himself for Pittsburgh. Buffalo goes to the run and gets ready to punt the ball. Buffalo playing a computerized football game. They're playing percentages, and it's awfully tough to gamble and win against the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's all awful tough to win if you don't gamble, Don, in my opinion. But in your own end, I think Knox's thinking is the specter of an interception could put this game right the other way in there's, a hurry. There's no doubt that that's his thinking. Jackson goes back inside the five-yard line. T. Bell is back now as the deep safety, alone safety for the Steelers. Jackson takes his time, doesn't hit it very far. T. Bell's going to run it back to Buffalo. He takes it from his 46, goes straight ahead across the 50. And Theo Bell moves the ball to the 48-yard line of the Bills. So, again, the Steelers are inching their way upfield on change of the possession. This is their best position. Inside the Buffalo 50, we'll be back in a moment. Villagers, who were ranked number one. It won't be this week. They were beaten by Kentucky, but they're both top five basketball teams, and they'll contend for the national championship before it's over. Next Saturday at 2 Eastern time on NBC. Swing pass goes to Benny Cunningham. On first and 10, he's inside the 40. And down to the 38-yard line. Now the Steelers get the big guy moving. 250-pound tight end Benny Cunningham goes a crashing right at the Buffalo defenders for an 11-yard gain. This play looked as if it might go for a touchdown when Cunningham made the reception. A little, little play action fake. He holds the linebackers in the center of the field. Gets the ball out to Cunningham with three men in front of him. Isaiah Robertson forces the play in, makes the tackle himself. Very fine play. 
And that is the first complete pass of this football game for Bradshaw and the Steelers. And now they're starting to move the ball there down to the 38-yard line of Buffalo. First and 10 Steelers, no score first quarter. Bradshaw, the gun arm. John Stowers turns out, catches his 67th pass of the year. He was out of bounds, Don. He caught it kind of lazy, and he, he's, he's arguing with the official at this point, but he lifted his leg just before he caught it, never got both feet in bounds. At least that's the way it looked to me. We'll watch it again on tape. All right, let's see. The ball takes a while getting there. He kind of puts it over the top of the... Yep. See, he had his well. right foot lifted. <clears throat> so he still has 66 receptions. One short of Roy Jefferson's all-time club record of 67. Bradshaw figures he's got one right in the pudding. Comes up for naught. So now it's second down and 10 for Pittsburgh. Back. Here comes Franco Harris. And the Bills are there to get him. Isaiah Robertson. Number 58. Who came to the Bills, as all the Bills fans know, but a lot of others may not, from the Los Angeles Rams. Joining his old coach there, Chuck Knox. Played well here. He's played very well. Not as good as he did at Los Angeles, though. Five yard line. Three wide receivers in the game. They have Swan and Stallworth on one side, so they can't be double covered. Jim Smith is ahead of here is the pitch up the middle, and nice defensive play by Charles Rome. Number 26. A cornerback from North Carolina Central. He just leaned in and tipped the ball away. Very on very few occasions will you ever see a defensive back in a position to knock the ball down when Bradshaw throws that type of pass, as he does so often to both Stallworth and Swan. They get down on the man, they get 20 yards downfield, start coming back, he puts the ball low, they take it on the tarp. That time was just a great defensive play to stop him. Now, fourth down and a long field goal attempt, a 52-yarder. Matt Barr, who made the all-rookie team, beating out people like Uwe Von Schaumann of Miami, and Tony Franklin of the Eagles, and a kick is partially blocked, and it rolls downfield, and so Buffalo is going to come out of this with the ball first and 10 at the 35-yard line. First kicks outside the 20th to the line of scrimmage. When they're missed, and so Matt Barr, who's had a good season, has been very hot lately, comes off after his field goal attempt was blocked, as one of Buffalo's was earlier. Don, you know, very seldom do you see anybody hold Pittsburgh, particularly at home, right. if they give them, ball, them the ball at midfield. Now, the Bills have done it on three occasions. They've been up to the task so far. Maybe that's why they're not coming up firing the ball. I, I think they better if they're going to move it, but we'll see. Well, they've got the game breakers. One of them's on the left flank. You see his head at the bottom of your screen, Jerry Butler, and Frank Lewis is nose to nose out on the right side as Ferguson drops out on first and ten. He throws the ball. is caught by the tight end, Joe Schiff, but not for much yardage. On a first and ten play from the Bills' 35, he goes out of bounds at about the 38. You're talking, John, about how tough the Steelers are to beat here. They've won 13 straight at Three Rivers and 21 of their last 22. In fact, since their first playoff year in 72, they're 57 and 8 at home. That's right. If you're going to throw, you're going to try some vulnerable area. However, when you pick on Dirk Winston, you're generally picking in the wrong area. Number 59, Jack Ham, is out probably for the season with a sprained ankle. They put Winston in. He's played the other side. Now he's back on the left side. Play, plays both of them very well. It's second down and about seven. Whoops. Harry Miller slid into second base there about the 40-yard line. Lost his footing. The field looks a little wet. Very unusual climate conditions. It's overcast. Robin Cole goes out along with Dirt Winston. Third down and seven, six and a half for Buffalo. No score late in the first quarter. 2.40 to play in the quarter. Ferguson stands in. He's got to hurry. And Joe Ferguson is knocked down by Lauren Taves, number 51, who was one of the best linebackers in the league, even though he didn't start. Pittsburgh's so deep in linebackers that Taves started this year as third string. Generally, when a linebacker's making the tackle on a quarterback behind the line, it's a blitz. This was not. They only sent four linemen in on, on Ferguson. They left a line, a lineman back at the line of scrimmage to pick up the slack. Very effective. They pulled their offensive line. That's the 42nd time that Joe Ferguson's been sacked this year. They've been fooled a lot. <laughs> Here's the punt by Rusty Jackson downfield. T-Bell, he'll return them all. He will not fair catch. 
Turns the corner. Good special teams play by the Bills. Old Hazlitt was down there thumping on him. Next Sunday, football second season begins with the AFC wild card game. The playoffs will be over for the loser while the winner advances into the divisional playoff competition. First, it's NFL 79, and then exclusive coverage of the AFC wild card game Sunday on NBC. Question. They haven't capitalized on any of them. They've had good field position on each occasion. If they don't start turning some of it into points, the, the flow can turn. Here's a pitch. It's caught by Lynn Swan, and he breaks the defense, and Lynn Swan takes the ball inside the 35-yard line. He's down to the 32. They do indeed need the big play, and they get one. Bradshaw to Lynn Swan. Yes, sir. If you're going to go to somebody for a big play, this was very well covered by Mario Clark. He's having a fine year. When you're trying to handle Lynn Swan and Terry Bradshaw, you've got your work cut out. You can see he's all over the top of Swan. Just did not get a piece of the ball. Result, big play for Pittsburgh. A 24-yard gain on the play, so the Steelers now advance the ball down inside the Buffalo 33. It's first and 10. No score. And Rocky Blyer, the former Notre Dame captain now in his 11th year as a Steeler, takes it inside the 30. As it's ready to go now this time, let's see what happens at second down in about six. Back to the run. Sidney Thornton is in the game. And this big power back takes the ball inside the 25-yard line and close to a first down. This time Jim Hazler was on the stop. We'll watch him. Sometimes the number of tackles that a, that a linebacker makes is not the indicator. It's where he makes them. You'll notice... Uh, Lambert, early in his career, made a lot of tackles. Some of them passed the line of scrimmage three or four year yards. This time, Hazlitt gets held up a little, just too long, couldn't make the play at the line of scrimmage. As a result, it's third and one. Third and one it is, as the ball is just short of the Bills' 23-yard line. The clock is running in the first quarter, 50 seconds to play in the quarter, and there's no score on the board. The world champions have challenged their first scoring attempt. The field goal was blocked. End off. Franco Harris and he thunders down to the 20-yard line. It's a first down for the Steelers. Ben Williams, a fourth-year defensive end from Ole Miss, number 77, was on the stop. But Franco Harris, who comes into this game having rushed for almost 1,100 yards, 4.4 yards a rush, one of his best per carry averages in recent years. He's carrying less, but getting some more. Been at it a long time in his eighth year now from Penn State. Caught a lot of balls, too. He has 34 receptions. First and 10, Pittsburgh. Bradshaw gets it away. Look at Lynn Swan cuts the ball for a touchdown. The spectacular athlete from Southern California goes up. He's only about 5'10", if that. But he can put his feet as high as your head when he goes in the air. That looked like one of those hop, skip, and jump contests. He got it on the first hop. He could not have extended one more inch to grab the ball, got it in his hands, pulled it down. And I'm not certain that Bradshaw was throwing to him, if you want to know my viewpoint. Well, in the post-game locker room, I'm pretty sure you'll be saying he was. Oh, sure. <laughs> Worked fine. Beautiful catch. Matt Barr hits the extra point up and good. And so the Steelers hit him a spectacular play, and here it is. Okay, I know Bradshaw's attention was down the field on the left side. Let's, yeah, he was going to Swan. Well thrown ball, but a great catch. Now for an update on NFL 79, let's go to Brian Gumble in New York. Hits it well downfield. He'll take it inside the five yard line and come up with the ball is Moody. He's at the 15, it turns outside and gets to about the 20 yard line. And so that will conclude play at the end of the first quarter. The score is the Steelers 7 and the Bills nothing. And we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. California six years ago. What a year of the draft that was for the Steelers. Four all pros. Swan in the first round. Lambert in the second round. No third round. Starwood in the fourth round. And Webster in the fifth round. Dropping to throw is Joe Ferguson. L.C. Green was after him. And Ferguson with a gun arm it downfield to Frank Lewis who got waffled from behind I think before the ball got there. Well 
it's by, by a, a good heads up play on Ferguson's part, gets them a penalty, gets them in a situation where they're out of a hole, they can get a drive started. They tried to go to the screen. Joe Green was standing right in the middle of it. He couldn't throw the ball on a screen, had to roll out, find any sort of alternate receiver he could. With a good play, draws a penalty. Okay, let's take a look. Here comes he Ferguson, little pass play action turn. pass. Number now 31. it's a screen. He's trying to go, but, but Green reads it real early. That's a trick that all real good tackles own, and uh, those screens get harder and harder to pull off. Well, Ferguson did well to get that ball away because he had L.C. Greenwood coming in down on him. Boy, he's got some arm, Ferguson. First and ten, Buffalo, and the Steeler fans are protesting the penalty. Pittsburgh leads the game in the second quarter, 7-0. Ferguson digging in. He throws a spot loss as Lambert comes in and puts the heat on the receiver, Mike Collier. Well, that Steeler defense doesn't take much to get them ready. You just rattle the cage. Just a little bad luck. When you throw the ball to your back, you do not want to run into a blitz defense. That puts Lambert man-to-man -man on Collier all over the field. As soon as Collier comes out of the backfield, Lambert's on him like glue. The ball gets there just about the time Lambert does. Unhappy ending for Buffalo. Lambert had 10 unassisted tackles in Monday night's loss at Houston. He's a leading candidate for a most valuable defensive player in the entire league this year with his six interceptions. He's playing with a separated shoulder, has been all season. The handoff goes up the middle, and the Bills on second down and 10 try the run, and there's nothing there as Pittsburgh shuts down Terry Miller. Don, you get the feeling Joe Green knows what this game means. Yeah. Uh, he's standing in there on that particular occasion. He, had, he stood up. The, the left the right side of, of the offensive line for Buffalo Man. and with it the ball carrier that's one of the greatest replays I've seen all season you see him take on an all pro guard Delama Lure. you can see Delama Lure look like he got hit by a Rocky Marciano right hand our producer today is David Stern our director Jim Cross for NBC as we have third down and nine coming up <laughs> Buffalo trailing seven nothing Ferguson against the rush look at these guys come and Ferguson got his arm moving forward just before John Vanizak leveled him. Gary Dunn, 67, was that guy coming in like some big surrealistic hawk jumping over people. There's no secret when you play Pittsburgh, you've got to execute whether you throw the ball or run the ball. It's the third, third and nine situation for Buffalo. Very tough call for a quarterback. Everybody gets in their starting blocks, tries to get to the quarterback's position before he does. That time Vanizak did. Back deep, T. Bell, ready to receive another punt from Rusty Jackson. Jackson standing back at his 17-yard line. Fourteen oh three to play in the first half. The Steelers lead the game, seven nothing. And Jackson did well to get it away. There is a penalty marker down. Here comes T. Bell. He's across the 40. Turns the corner. He's across the 50, and Bell goes out of bounds at about the 45-yard line of Buffalo. And I think the penalty will be on Buffalo because the punter took a little too much time to kick it since it hit the ground. He made a good play, but you get in a hurry when you're an offensive lineman. Take off before it's kicked. Offense on the kicking team, number 52, illegal, downfield, refuse. First down. Only the wide men can be five yards or more downfield before the ball is kicked. It was an excellent play by Jackson just to pick the ball up, but when it takes that long, you're going to get caught. The ball is down now to the 48-yard line of Buffalo. Pittsburgh has the ball first and 10. Bradshaw looking for some more. Stands in, throws the ball as caught. John Starworth comes back at the ball. This one will go, and he has 67 receptions, and he's down to the Buffalo 39, a pickup of eight yards. I think the most surprised man in the house was Lucius Sanford. He thought he was in perfect position. He was. Bradshaw throws the ball under him. He's trying to keep it from going over the top. Starworth comes back right under Sanford and makes the play. Starworth just got it away as Kadish was bearing down on him. So John Starworth has now caught passes in 43 consecutive games. Second down and two, Pittsburgh. Pitch back goes to Franco Harris. And Harris powers his way down to the 35-yard line. 
Jeff Nixon, the free safety, the rookie from Richmond, made the tackle. Lots of times, little things indicate whether plays are successful or not. That time, Mike Webster just kind of, he was he had Mike Kadish nose to nose. He shot by him, picked up a linebacker, and kept the pursuit out. We can, maybe we can pick it up. Here goes Webster, right by Kadish. Now he picks off a linebacker and keeps the pursuit down. As a result, they pick up five yards. So it's first and ten now for the Pittsburgh Steelers, 35-yard line of Buffalo. Bradshaw with men on either flank gives off to his big back Franco Harrison. Look at that burst of speed. The stutter step and then the acceleration has been his hallmark as one of the game's premier runners. And Franco Harris accelerates ahead for 14 yards and a first down. You know, most teams, when they get players hurt, kind of stay away from the replacements. They don't feature them. In Pittsburgh's case, they've got Peterson and Corson starting for the first time in quite a while. They're running to the left side as much as they do the right and just as effectively. Well, as Chuck Knox says, all they do is change the numbers when they put new people in. They're just as good. Sometimes you never know how good the replacement is in Pittsburgh because he never gets to play. That shot, first down, takes a look into the end zone. Broken up by Nixon. Nixon's only been starting now for the last five games, but he has five interceptions. John Stallworth goes by to the left and second down and ten. Lynn Swan is on the right flank. As Bradshaw rolls out, here's the Russian Kadish. He swings oh. it out and goes to Benny Cunningham. And Cunningham, who is a full load, when he gets it moving, takes it down inside the 15-yard line. On second and 10, he might have a first down. <laughs> the scores are coming in, and some of the guys have cashed in, I think. Maybe New England has. Right now, Cleveland is beating Cincinnati 6 to nothing. Ryan Seip pass to Dave Logan for 33 yards and a touchdown. New England has come back now. Grogan to Horace Ivory. Touchdown. Patriots lead the Vikings 7 to 6. Well, I think John Madden said it. He said Terry Bradshaw is the most important single player on any team in the National Football League right now. I happen to agree with him. He does so many things well. Here's an occasion where his receiver was, was well covered. He had to pick up a first down, puts his head down and picks it up. Let's see if we can figure out what happened. Charles Rome's covered the black deed. It was accidental, though, as Freeman came in and rode him down. Helmet came off and apparently took a cleat on the head. I'm sure he'll be back. He's liable not to miss it down, but he's going to keep him out for a while. Kruzek is in there. In his fourth year from Boston College, he doesn't have the arm of Bradshaw nor the running ability, but when he's been in there, he's been a very effective quarterback. Bradshaw doesn't want to miss that. Next case, let's go. Put a bandage on there, put the helmet back on. He's ready to go back in. First and goal now from the two-yard line for Pittsburgh. Franco Harris takes it down close to the goal line, but does not take it in with 11.28 to play in the first half. Here comes Bradshaw. Missed one down. Once you come off the field, you have to stay out for a play. You're going to come back. A nice place to have the balls on the one-yard line. Second down and goal now for Pittsburgh. Pitch back. Start and block. Harris carries. Touchdown Steelers. And all of a sudden it's turned into a torrent as the Steelers roll up 13 points and looking for a 14th as far as back out on the field with 10.56 to play in the half. You remember when Pittsburgh started to roll? It started with a little skirmish between the Lamalur and Lambert early in the first quarter. The Steelers were a little lackadaisical. All of a sudden, they got their act together, put 14 points on the board, and they're playing very well. There is Barr, right up and good. Right on time, and so the Steelers extend their lead to 14 to nothing. There's a break in the action here at Three Rivers Stadium. We'll be back with Pittsburgh kicking off to Buffalo after this. 14 nothing. A high spinner downfield is going to be taken by Len Willis. He's across the 20. 25, 30, not done yet. 40, look out, look out, look out as Len Willis finally gets it out to the 45-yard line. Mel Blunt, that's how good the Steelers are. They have all pros playing on their special teams, made the play. NBC Sports World salutes the champions of 79. It's been a memorable year and we'll review its many magic moments with an exciting look back at the year's major events on Sports Year 79. A salute to the champions. 
at next Saturday on Sports World. Gary Bradshaw being attended to. That was a live shot. They're working on that head again. First and 10 Buffalo. 44 yard line of the Bills. Ferguson needs the big play now. Here's the rush. He swings it out. He's got Collier. Good play. Good execution against a big rush, and the Bills get the ball across midfield and down to the 49-yard line of Pittsburgh. Joe Ferguson was so good in high school that Burt Jones waited until Ferguson picked his college, then Burt Jones selected his. They both came out of high school the same year. Ferguson, of course, picked Arkansas. Jones went to LSU. I'd say both of them picked, picked the school they played pretty well for. That's something. Every 16 completions, it's in the end zone on the average. Second down and four now for Buffalo. Hand off. Look at the running room there. It's Collier, an ex-stealer, thunders through the Pittsburgh defensive front and then rams the ball right down inside the 40 to the 36. All right. Sometimes you have to, you guess, and once in a while you're wrong. That time Jack Lambert was in a position, thought he could make the play. You can see him coming out. Couldn't get there in time. Reggie McKenzie got to him before he could get a piece of Collier. Big game. A 12-yard gain on the play. So it's first and 10 Buffalo. Bills trailing 14-0 second quarter. Frank Lewis, 82, goes in motion. Ferguson goes right back to it. Got a good horse ride, and boy, they send Collier right at the Steelers again. He's well, down inside the 30. You know, when you Five. when you sit down and you, you research a team, or I say you get into preparation, you say, hey, in second and four, first and ten, there are certain situations and tendencies. They come off their right side, off their right tackle a lot. Lambert thought it was coming right there, played the play, and was wrong. Steve Furness was on the tackle, but six yards downfield at second down, a long four for Buffalo. As they have the ball down to the 32-yard line of Pittsburgh. 8.53 to play first half, 14-0 Steelers. Pitch back. There comes Roland Hooks taking the ball down to the 29-yard line. This is Don Cricky with John Brody, Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Temperatures in the 40s. The Steelers with a game they must win to take the AFC Central Division once again. Are out in front, 14-0. Bradshaw threw to Swan, 19 yards out for the first touchdown, and Franco Harris took it in from a yard away behind a big block thrown by Sidney Thornton for the second touchdown. Two tight ends for Buffalo, Joe Ship, Ron Howard. It's third down in about two. Ferguson's looking, Lewis running along. Oh, it's Joe Ship. Had the ball on his hands, and he would have gone a long way as he had cleared out underneath the deep drop. He dropped it, and here comes the field goal unit. Yeah, I think Joe Ship should have caught the ball, but Ferguson threw it way too hard. It was a very short distance between the quarterback and the receiver. Nobody around him. All he had to do was just kind of plunk it over the top of the linebacker's head. Would have been a big game. Now they've got to try and kick a field goal. You can see Ferguson knows it. He threw it a little harder than he needed to. Just made it a little tougher catch. Didn't get it. With rookie Dan Minucci holding at the 37-yard line, Nick Nicomayo will fly a 47-yard field goal. Whoops. A little hitch in his step there. Came up short. Apparently the hold was bobbled briefly, and then Nicomayo's timing was off. We'll take a look again. When this happens, Don, usually the holder doesn't get it down in time. As a result, when you get your backswing caught, <laughs> nothing good happens. And we'll be back at Three Rivers Stadium in a moment. <laughs> Pittsburgh has 126 yards total in this game. Buffalo 61. Steelers on first and 10 go to Franco Harris. And Shane Nelson, who's Buffalo's leading tackler this season, number 59, makes the stop. He's in his third year from Baylor. The linebacking has been the strongest area of Buffalo's defensive play. Robertson, Hazlitt, Nelson, and Sanford. The handoff goes to Harris. He turns the corner. It comes up to the 30-yard line on a fine defensive play by Shane Nelson, number 59, who ran him down. And so it's going to be third and long now. And we pause briefly for station identification. Oops. Buffalo going first and 10 from their 20. Six 
minutes 18 to play in the first half. Mike Collier didn't find anything up the middle, so he turned the corner and gets outside and runs the ball very nicely across the 25-yard line. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Steelers and the National Football League is prohibited. The last time the Bills had the ball, Don, they moved the ball pretty well at the line of scrimmage. Their people were moving the Steelers back. That time they got stuffed and Collier picked up a little on his own. on second down and three. Carter got to the line of scrimmage and that was all. Dennis Winston, 53, knocked him down. Buffalo's 0-6, 0-4-6 in this game on third down conversion. They have third down and about two coming up. Pittsburgh leads 14-0. Second quarter and here is Joe Ferguson gunning it and it's almost picked up. Jerry Butler was wide open for just a moment and Lambert, who has the six interceptions, almost had another one. You hit that right wide open for just a moment because Mike Collier was running a pattern underneath. Had Ferguson been able to see Butler early, I think he would have had him. Got him just a little late. Collier took Lambert right into the middle of the play. Fourth down. Fourth and two, and that sends Rutsey Jackson out onto the field to punt once again for Buffalo with 4.49 to play in the first half. San Francisco leading Atlanta 14-10 second quarter. Line drive punt. T. Bell will take that one, and here it comes back at Buffalo across the 40. And Bell gets to the 44-yard line with the Steelers going offense once again, first and 10. So Pittsburgh with Terry Bradshaw at quarterback in a 14-0 lead sends the offense back out onto the field, and we'll be back in a moment. NBC's coverage of NCAA basketball got underway yesterday with DePaul upsetting UCLA at Los Angeles the next Saturday. Another matchup of two of the nation's best teams. Defending ACC champion North Carolina, led by All-America forward Michael Corrin, goes against Bobby Knight and his Indiana Hoosiers at Bloomington. That's at 2 o'clock Eastern time next Saturday here on NBC. Here comes Franco Harris. On first and 10, Harris carries to the 45-yard line. He got 11 and a first down. And the Pittsburgh fans are getting more excited because they know, you know, it's funny what certain teams, uh, the fans seem, seem to think their team should work on. Uh, with Pittsburgh, it's when they get way ahead, they don't seem to blow people out of the ballpark. And a lot of fans have mentioned that concern. It seems to have been a tendency. It's a nice, it's a nice way to go when, when that's the biggest concern you've got as a fan. Hey, I'd like to have the concession for Steeler hats. Everybody here has got one on. <laughs> Harris has now gained 49 yards and 12 carries. He has a touchdown. Bradshaw, play faking, swings it out. There's Benny Cunningham. Gets away, and Cunningham is grabbed and finally knocked down inside the 30-yard line. It took about 10 guys to do it. It was Mike Webster and Larry Brown who got Cunningham loose. With a little screen pass, the same type they threw early in the ballgame on the first series of plays. When you have a center that's this flexible, that can do this many things as a football player, you can call these sort of plays. This is a little screen back to Cunningham. Number 52, Webster is the man knocking the linebacker down. Finally, they wrestle the big guy from Clemson to the ground. It's first and 10 Pittsburgh, 29 yard line of Buffalo. Bradshaw, quick screen to Stallworth. Blockers in front. What a well-executed play. Buffalo's linebackers penetrated well to get it, knock it down. Sherman White, 83, was through, along with Jeff Nixon and Charles Romes. You know, Ben, when you, when you look at Pittsburgh, I guess that their total yardage statistic is not surprising to anyone. They do more things. They have more variation to their offense and the best personnel playing it. Uh, no wonder they're going to break an all-time yardage stat. John Starworth now with 68 receptions, a new Steeler record. Second down and five for Pittsburgh. 2.59 to play in the first half. Steelers 14, Bills nothing. Bradshaw takes a look. And finally, he goes down. 
Lucius Sanford was coming on a linebacker blitz. Second year linebacker from Georgia Tech, 57, and Kadish knocked him down. Should be interesting to see. They've got a holding call against the Pittsburgh lineman. It would take them out of field goal range, so I feel assured that they'll take the penalty. It'd be third and five. And the Steelers are getting five yards without too much trouble per play. <laughs> So there's a timeout on the field with 2.54 to play in the first half. Pittsburgh leading 14 to nothing. And Chuck Noel waiting to hear now. I think he may insert Jim Smith into the ball game, into the three, right. three wide receiver offense if they've got 15 to go. Pulling offense number 79. Second down. Got the right tackle, Larry Brown. Jim Smith goes in. Big burly Benny Cunningham comes out. Boy, he is big. Wide to the right goes Lynn Swan and John Starworth. Flank down the left is Jim Smith. Second down and 15. Bill jumped offside. Sherman White was in the encroachment zone when the ball was snapped. So the Steelers will get back five, and it'll be second down and about nine. But their whole defense is young and tough. Well, I haven't forgotten about Cousineau. And he will play in <laughs> Buffalo probably in three years. Bradshaw, I think, I think he's at this game today. Lynn Swan goes up, but not come down with it one-handed. Cousineau requested for a couple of tickets to this game, and they think he's here. And my understanding is part of his package in Montreal is that to get the full money package, he's got to play there three years. But if he thinks he's going to own part of a Canadian team, he's dreaming. They're not interested in <laughs> Americans owning anything in Montreal. The ball's at the 29-yard line. It's going to be third down and 10. Bradshaw's had a lot of time to throw, but the defenders have been on his receivers pretty close. Third down and 10 now for Pittsburgh. 29-yard line of Buffalo. Bradshaw, men out wide either side. Here's the deep drop. He throws, and he's got Franco Harris. Who loses the ball and Buffalo might have it. Now to the Steve the Bills have it. Buffalo has the ball. They will draw a crowd. Won't it, John? Let's throw them around out there. <laughs> well, you know, Franco made a fine play. He's made that kind of mistake all year long. He's trying to pick up extra yards. When he does so, he might be switching the ball from hand to hand and has fumbled more than in the past. So the Bills stopped the Steeler challenge and they now had the ball first and 10 of the 21. Terry had to go to his back. His wide receivers were covered downfield through a perfect ball to, to Franco Harris. He got it hit and lost it. Buffalo's ball first and 10. He's got 36 receptions this year. That's a career high. So Buffalo goes first and 10 and here's Ferguson taking a look, swinging it out, diving at the ball and it was not a well thrown ball but making the catch is Mike Collier. 228 to play in the first half. Yesterday, Green Bay beat Detroit 18-13. Jets beat Miami 27-24. And at halftime, we'll be going to New York where Bryant and Mike are standing by to update us on NFL 79. Second down and 10 for Buffalo. Ferguson takes the deep drop. Takes a look. Let's a rip out there is Len Willett. Lou Picone, and he had the ball and lost it. Picone looking back at the ball with all those Steelers converging on him. That takes some heart. Uh, you, it's got to be the worst feeling in the world. You know that ball's coming. You know everybody else is, too. You've got to keep your attention on it. He did a good job of that. Lou Picone, not very big, but boy, he can play special teams terror. If you're a receiver and a quarterback's throwing that ball down the middle, you know you're saying, hurry up, boy. Get it here quick. Lauren Taves and Dwayne Woodruff in now in the pass coverage as we have third down and 10 coming up for Ferguson in the bill. Good 
throw and a great catch as Frank Lewis turned in and had a bend back out and leaned in to get the ball for a Buffalo first down. He also stopped the clock after a 21-yard gain getting out of bounds. In order to catch 53 balls for over a 20-yard average, you have to be an outstanding pattern runner. Frank Lewis has been that. When he was in Pittsburgh, he was a great pattern runner. This time he gets Ron Johnson turned around, cuts out, gives himself some room to the sideline. Big gain, and they've got a chance to get on the board. First catch for Frank Lewis today. 21-yard gain. It's 54th of the season. He's been averaging 20 yards a catch, having a great season. First down and 10 for Buffalo. 42-yard line of the bill. 2.18 to play in the first half. Ferguson lets her rip. Lewis goes up and gets another one. Now they rule him out of bounds. He didn't have the ball. Had his hands on it and lost it as the Steelers stripped him. Donnie Shell was covering. Don, it's my opinion, looking at the at the back judge's view of the play, that he thought he stepped out of bounds. I don't know if he did or not, but you must have the ball. Or yeah, that's rule it's never one. any good. So it's at the 42-yard line, and second down and 10 is coming up. Lewis was the number one draft choice of the Pittsburgh Steelers out of Grambling nine years ago in his second season at Buffalo. Looks like a young 30. He was a 9-400 man in college. They go to the run on second down and 10. They've got to loosen up the defense a little bit as the Steelers are teeing off. Ears pinned back and a coming on the snap. Well, now that they've established they're going to throw the ball on first down, second down, third down, whenever they get an opportunity, a draw should be effective on occasion. They've got plenty of time. They can do what they want now. They've still got two minutes. Two minutes to go in the first half, and we'll have Buffalo with the ball when we return. This bud's for all the people who make the sidelines a part of the show. This bud's for you. For all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Begins of football, the Steelers, in a game they must win to take the AFC Central Division, are leading the Bills 14 to nothing. Buffalo has the ball at their 45-yard line. Third down and seven coming up for Ferguson. Two minutes to play in the first half. Ferguson throws. He's got his man, but Lou Capone lost it. Had it, took a couple of steps, and I think his knee hit it when he was falling down. So very nearly a big gainer for Buffalo, but it's a long out. And the Bills will punt the ball back with 154 to play in the half. You know, we haven't seen Jerry Butler catch a ball today, and there's good reason why a guy doesn't catch a ball. Generally, he's double teamed. He got that one for 27 yards, but he has been double teamed since and hasn't been close to it. Five for 35 is the punting average for Rusty Jackson. T. Bell, number 83, is back deep now for the Steelers. A high punt, knocked down field, and Bell will field it at his eight yard line. Loves to run with the ball. What happens, John, once those feet leave the ground like that? I tell you, you're up for grabs. And there's a penalty marker down. So while they assess what the penalty is, the punt of 48 yards was returned 16 yards by T. Bell. There are very few punt returners who are still returning punts as effectively as this man is after they've been in the league four or five years as he has. It's a real asset to have one who does it well. Here is the call on the penalty. On the receiving team, 21-27, Unsportsmanlike conduct between downs. First down. Steelers became unsportsmanlike. <laughs> Hawthorne, 27. One of the guilty parties. They also called, I think, 21, did he say? Mark Green. Oh, the Buffalo. Mixed it up. First and 10 now for the Steelers. 
That's uh, rolling out. Pursuit is on. He lofts it up in the air. Cunningham goes for the ball. And Buffalo has it. Mario Clark picked it up. I don't know how. But Mario headed back upfield with the football. So he's been doing better than the Buffalo receivers have been lately. That footing is very tenuous right down there between the 40 and 50 yard line. Any pattern that you're going to run, don't make any break in between that area. Bradshaw knows that he's got his receivers running straight patterns, crossing patterns. He tries to make a great throw out of a bad situation. And this is what happens usually when you do that. Whoops. But they do have the ball in great field position. Lynn Swan's down there covered by Clark, just hanging around the ball. Sometimes something comes up with right that's, to him. That's a great reaction. Bradshaw hit the open man all right. But it's coming back the other way. It's first and 10 now for Buffalo, 42-yard line of Pittsburgh. Ferguson swings it out. Collier catches the ball, but there's always someone waiting there. Lambert slams Collier down. Lambert 6'4, 220. And the terrible towels are a waving here in Pittsburgh. Well, Buffalo's coming up to the line of scrimmage. As we see this play, Lambert creates a situation again. He knows it's a very important time for Pittsburgh to dig in. Ferguson throws, and Lambert almost got an interception. Twice today, he has come close to intercepting. Lambert is not big as middle linebackers go. He's 6'4", which is tall, but he's only 220. A lot of guys in the league are playing at 245, but he's exceptionally strong. As we saw evidence by him throwing 215-pound Mike Collier down like a sack of wheat. Nobody told him he wasn't big. He is a striker. Well, they got some great ones in that defense. Joe Green backed up by Jack Lambert, and then you got the strong safety shell. Three all pros right down the middle. Right now, there's a break in the action with 54 seconds to play in the first half. We'll be back. Pickles Steelers 47. Lewis is wide right, so is Pacone. Butler's on the left flank. They're doubling up on Butler. Now Pacone goes in motion, takes some coverage off Lewis. Penalty markers down. Ferguson throws. Incomplete. This was built for the defense. Then the next year, Bradshaw came in. The focal point of the offense. And the Steelers were shortly thereafter on their way. Ferguson throws, and here is the swing pass. Rolling hook, running with the ball. Hit from behind by L.C. Greenwood, who popped in the head for three or four yards. And a third down and 11 play. The Bills got about six. They're down to the 35-yard line with 33 seconds left, and they're now sending out their field goal unit. 28 seconds on the clock running. They'll run it right down and call a timeout. Unless the Steelers do first, which they apparently are not about to. This surprises me. I, I think they're taking timeout now because they sent their punting team on the field, and that doesn't make any sense at all. It is their punter, Jackson, out there. He's heading off and working on getting on the same page here. You know, Don, they have to do something to get back in this ball game, turning the ball over with 15 seconds to play when they've got a chance to pick up a first end, get some points on the board. Is not taking a chance of getting on there. Now the offense is coming back on the field. Baltimore is beating the Giants 17 nothing at the half. Chuck Knox. And there is the veteran Bill Munson in the red jacket to the left, backing up Joe Ferguson along with the rookie Dan Minucci, who Knox thinks is going to be an NFL player, Minucci. We're watching Joe Ferguson with uh, Knox. That man in the red jacket is Bill Munson. He's been around for 16 years. Joe said he's helped him quite a bit this year, just from a settling down situation. They've become good friends, and Munson agrees with me that Ferguson might have the best arm he's ever seen. That's a pretty good arm. He can be very strong, Ferguson. Not that much weight. Only weighs about 188. But he works on the weight machines. Does a lot of calisthenics, stretching. He's got an arm like a good catcher. He just flicks the ball from behind his ear. One big play right now could put this ball game back in the hat. It's been all Pittsburgh throughout the first half. Seven point difference is not the difference between these two teams. Fourth down and four. They feel they're out of field goal range, so they go from scrimmage with 15 seconds left. 
Let a lot of time get away. Here's Lewis down the sideline. Incomplete. Bills let about 18 seconds run off the clock, though. Now it's down to 10, and Pittsburgh takes over the ball with a 14-0 lead, and they're about ready to take their winnings for the first two quarters to the locker room. The problem's been, in Buffalo's case, when they have thrown the ball, that Ferguson hasn't had enough time to allow his receivers to get into the secondary and run their routes. As a result, he's got to throw it before they break, and the ineffectiveness has, sh has shown the problem. Well, the Bills have had trouble running the ball, and Ferguson has been forced to throw it more and more. As the Steelers, who knew this game was important, they're playing like a playoff team. They're geared up and ready. Here's Thornton on the last play of the first half, running ahead and getting across the 40-yard line. And so the clock runs out. The first half ends, and the Pittsburgh Steelers take the 14-0 lead to the locker room. NFL 79, a complete report on this 16th weekend of play is coming up here on NBC. Steelers scored on a touchdown pass from Bradshaw to Lynn Swan, 19 yards, and later on a Franco Harris touchdown run from a yard out. Buffalo's been knocking. Ferguson's been so close in many throws, John. I think, Don, they just have to give him a little more time to get his receivers open. They could make this. In number 30, he is in the middle. Nate Hawthorne's on the left. The Pittsburgh Steelers with a lot of good people lined up on their kickoff return team also. Greg Hawthorne is back deep, and his ball is spinning over his way, but Anderson's going to move behind him and take it. And this is Anderson taking it across the 15 and the 20 and out to the 28-yard line. Jeff Nixon, 38, was down to make the tackle on special teams for the Buffalo Bills. If they go on offense, the Steelers do now first and 10. On offense for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Their quarterback is Terry Bradshaw. The runners are Rocky Blyer and Franco Harris, although we're going to see a lot of Thornton, it appears, in the second half, and Thornton's in the game now to start. Sidney Thornton. Wide receivers John Starworth and Lynn Swan, tight end Benny Cunningham. Corson, Peterson, Webster. On the left side, Larry Brown is at right tackle. Franco Harris carries in a first down play and advances the ball across the 30. The Bills defensively line up with a front three. Ben Williams, 77. Mike Kadish, 71. Sherman White, 83. Linebackers, 58. Isaiah Robertson, 55. Jim Hazlitt, the rookie. 59. Shane Nelson, and 57. Lucius Sanford. Mario Clark and Charles Romes are the corners. Jeff Nixon and Steve Freeman are the safety. Second down and eight for the Steelers. Bradshaw stands in, throws it down, and Stalworth has the ball. Giles Rome's got him around the ankle, and that was enough to finally bring him down. But there's a big gain on the play down to the out to the 46-yard line. It's a first down for Pittsburgh. You give Bradshaw that much time, his receivers have a chance to run alternate routes. They were covered on their original route. They moved it around a little bit. He spotted Stallworth open. Just like eggs in a basket. When you go back there and you're, you're not rushed and you're not hurried, you see Williams got in pretty early, but he stepped underneath. There was no one to force him to throw early. It's an easy day when that happens. Chris Keating is backing the line now for Buffalo number 52, a rookie from Maine. Hazard is out of the game. He's been thrown out. Downfield they go, and Sidney Thornton, who had some injury problems after starting out great. He was out then about four weeks with an ankle injury. Is back and raring to go in playoff form. Thornton on the big game of receiving a Bradshaw pass. You know, people have talked about how well Rocky Blyer blocks, and he does. He's also an excellent runner, and his, his yard per carry average, as the, as the other two backs is, is over four yards of carry. But this guy not only can run with the football, he can block, he can catch. He's an all-purpose back. Pittsburgh's got two of them. And they also have another first down as they start to mount a challenge in the third quarter. Sidney Thornton gets the call again. He is down to the 27-yard line. Keating on the tackle. Keating will be in there the rest of the way. Hazlitt has been thrown out of the game. We haven't spelled it out to us, so they have not. It's just what the reason is. Well, they've, they've stated that he's got a personality like uh, Jack Lambert. Somebody said he kicked Bradshaw first, but... Uh, I don't know if that's the reason, but I do know he's not in the ball game. Second down and five coming up now for Pittsburgh. The ball 
Cowles advanced down close to the 25 yard line and a second down and five. It'll bring up third and three. I'd like very much to find out if we can what the reason Haslett is out of the game for. We'll get down to our sideline men. Chuck Knowles first season at Pittsburgh one victory 13 losses. But that was the Terry Bradshaw year. When Bradshaw suffered that cut scalp. Haslett was thrown out for unnecessary roughness. Jim Bradshaw. Third down and three. Franco Harris to the outside. And Harris runs it down inside the 15-yard line before Jeff Nixon knocks him down. He really got a lot of help that time from John Stallworth. He kind of waited, allowed Stallworth to come back from his wide receiver position, chopped down the linebacker, and allowed him to go outside, pick up a big game. We'll watch it again now from the end zone replay. Well, Bradshaw hands off to Franco. It's a trap play. The Steelers trap everybody. You can see Mullins gets a pretty good block. But now here comes Stallworth all the way from the inside. Franco sets him up, goes to the outside, first and ten. Come fake the throw, and it's tipped away. Lynn Swan goes for the ball one-handed. Guarding him on the play was Mario Clark, who has one interception today. So it will be second down and ten for Pittsburgh, 14-yard line of Buffalo. You can see Bradshaw figured he'd have Swan open. Mario Clark's got the toughest job in the world. He has no help to the inside from the linebackers. The linebackers are man to man on the backs in this instance. Clark's got him all over the field. Lynn gets inside, but he just can't pick up enough ground to get to the ball. So the Steelers now second down and 10 at the 14 yard line. Two hundred and twenty-five pound back field in a five foot ten inch frame. <laughs> Crashes on down to about the eight yard line. He was a little disappointed. I think he lost his footing a bit when he made his cut up the field. He got had two good blockers out in front of him. If the Steelers win today, it'll be the one hundredth win for Pittsburgh under Chuck Noll. He'll become the fourteenth NFL coach to win a hundred games. The Steelers now with 100 yards rushing in the game and not many teams have done that against Buffalo recently. Bills have been real tough to move the ball against. Buffalo's defense coming into this game has given up only one touchdown a game for the last four weeks. But they're about to give up a third of Thornton is in the end zone. Sidney Thornton straight ahead power drives it right out in. When they get in trouble, they say, Mike Webster, we're going to run another trap block. You get your man, our guard will get his. They come to it whenever they feel they have to get yardage inside the 10 yard line. They do it effectively. Thornton picked up the last three yards on his own. But take a look. You can see Larry Brown cracking down, gets a defensive tackle, allows Thornton to get through at the point of attack, and he carries it right on into the end zone. That's tough down there, and these guys do it consistently well. Boy, they do. They just fire out off the snap, blast away at the defensive front, and then those power backs pour through, and that time Thornton takes it in. And so the extra point by Matt Fire up and good and Pittsburgh extends its lead to a commanding 21 to nothing. Steelers ain't going to be no kick in the head when he ran to the ball and lacerated. Now the running hand by Keith Modi is out across the 20 to the 25 yard line. The Pittsburgh Steelers just going 71 yards in nine plays. For their third touchdown. Those of you watching in Pittsburgh, Buffalo and Tampa Bay will see this game in its entirety if it gets more out of hand if the Steelers put any more points out. And the rest of the network may very well be switching to the Kansas City Tampa Bay Buccaneers game. There comes Joe Ferguson in the Bills first and 10 at their 26 yard line. Steelers took the opening kickoff of the second half and subsequently turned it right down into a touchdown. Ferguson throws. Lewis seemed to be behind the pass coverage, but the ball was tipped away. Dirt Winston, 53. Getting some. I mean, they're calling the plays that they hope can get him back in the ball game, but I can't even see anybody open from up here, Don. So you know Ferguson's having trouble. That time Winston got right in the lane. 
His intended receiver, Frank Lewis, had no case. None at all. It'll be second down and 10 now for the Buffalo Bills. Ferguson gets into the game having hit 53% of his throws. Passed for 14 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. He's been sacked this season 42 times. Starts to hurt. Second and 10, Mike Collier, who's been getting a load of running work, but not many yards, gets it across the 25 and got to the line of scrimmage. Joe Green, 75, knocked him down. And Dwight White is in it, right defensive end, 78. Steve Furness, 64th, the left tackle, right tackle. L.C. Greenwood and Joe Green, the left side of that defensive front. Griff goes in. And third down and nine. They got them all at the line of scrimmage. They give you a lot of looks, don't they? You're not sure what they're going to do. Ferguson throws. Gary Butler gets the ball. But the Steelers have that first down marker hemmed off. You're not going to get to that. All right, that play is designed to go behind the linebacker. But Butler cannot get deep enough, easily enough, to be able to take it all the way behind the linebackers or Ferguson wouldn't have had time to throw. So he had to cut it underneath the backers. When he did so, they recovered and kept it short of a first down. And once again, T. Bell is back to receive a Buffalo punt. There is the punter, Rusty Jackson. That is 20. Takes it at the 21 yard line. Takes a look. Here's a penalty marker down as Bell starts up. Turns the corner. Foot races on. They try to get him at the pass and knock him out of bounds. Mike Collier finally ran T Bell out. T Bell with number 83 would be starting on a lot of NFL teams as a wide receiver. Turning punts is all the work you can get here at Pittsburgh. They've got, got a, another one, Jim Smith, that might be playing for quite a few teams. And when he did play, he looked like a carbon copy of the other two. You talk to the Pittsburgh players, and they all are very aware of the talent this team has and the way it's been put together, but another big attribute the Steeler organization has is a tremendous camaraderie. These guys like to play in Pittsburgh, Super Bowl years or not. That's how you become a good team. Back, number 27, holding. Right now, after the penalty assessment, there's a break in the action, a timeout, and we'll return to Three Rivers Stadium in a moment. Bradshaw, quarterback. Oh. 145 yards passing, looking for more. Brings it out. Big Sidney Thornton has the ball. And look at Nixon come up and wrestle him down. Well, that's a full load to take on. Well, it, it looks to me as though Pittsburgh is not is working on their weakness because they have not let Buffalo up since early in the second quarter. They continue to put points on the board and they continue to go after them. This play, when things are going well, they just seem to fall in place. Both Buffalo defenders run into each other, knocking each other out of the place. Sidney Thornton turns it into a big gainer. Well, the Steelers have the ball first down and 10 of the 43 yard line of Buffalo. Bradshaw, rolling, dropping, lets her fly. Intercepted. Nixon with a sixth interception. I tell you, this kid's going to be in the league a long time. He doesn't play like a rookie. Well, that's a gimme right there, Don. Bradshaw's thrown a few passes in the last three or four weeks that, that really look a little suspect. Now, that ball should not have been thrown. It's thrown in the middle of the field, soft. It's the kind of pass you throw when you figure you can do no wrong. And as soon as you start thinking that way, you do a lot of things wrong. He's trying to throw off balance to a, to a wide receiver running straight down the field into his own defense, and you can't get away with it. So the Bills go on offense first and 10 at their 30. Failing in the game, 21 to nothing. Ferguson hands off to Collier, and Collier crashes out across the 30 out close to the 33-yard line. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. One of the two in the AFC. If the Steelers win this game, and they give every indication of being on their way to another win. Second down and six. Ferguson takes a drop. Looks, stands in, throws. That ball is intercepted by Shell of the Steelers. So Pittsburgh gets it right back. Hey, when you start getting to the quarterback, 
It really allows those defensive backs to start playing the play. That time, Shell was the intended receiver as far as he was concerned. He jumped in front of Lewis. Lewis had no chance to make the play. Get a little active down there, Don. Guys are all revved up. The Steelers will have a couple of weeks off if they win this game. And Buffalo, after its first possession, hadn't been in the general vicinity of the Steeler end zone. All day long, the cornerbacks for the Steelers, Blunt and Johnson, have been playing face-to-face -face against the wide receivers. In doing so, they've taken their routes away. They've made their wide receivers come into their holes late. It's a, and their pass rush has been good. It's allowed their safeties to play the ball. And Shell comes up with an interception. Terry Bradshaw hands off. Thornton turns the corner. He's inside the 40. Puts his head down and gets down to the 35-yard line. Boy, they're up and yelling and whooping and stopping here in Pittsburgh. They can't get enough. John, here's a report on that big NFC Central battle. Weather is a big factor. Tampa Bay and Kansas City are scoreless in the fourth quarter in heavy rain and mud in Tampa Bay. Yeah. Meanwhile, Chicago is leading St. Louis 14 to nothing in very cold weather in the second quarter at Soldier Field in Chicago. Well, it's just like Tampa Bay's behind then if they're tied because they lose if they tie. That's right. Bradshaw, 11 of 21, 177 yards and a touchdown. Off goes and Peters makes the play. Here's a fumble. Buffalo has the ball. The Bills get the ball back. Getting a little sloppy, folks. Dee Freeman might have been the guy who scooped it up as Franco Harris coughed it up. It's the fourth turnover for the Steelers. They've turned the ball over quite a bit this year, and they've still been the most productive team in the National Football League. That kind of puts to rest that old cliche about fumbles, injuries, and turnovers, doesn't it? Right now, as Buffalo comes out to go first and 10, there'll be a break in the action with 5.43 left to play in the third quarter, and the Steelers leading the Buffalo Bills 21 to nothing. White White comes up with this one. It's wet, but it's not that wet. Feel a little wet. It hadn't rained all day, though. White White, Mad Dog White, they call him. Comes off the field. Trying hard to give it back and forth each other. So Dwight White, after one play, gets the ball right back from Buffalo. And now the Steelers go on offense at the 29 yard line of Buffalo. First and 10. Whoops. Another fumble. They better check the footballs. Well, they change them every play, Don. They can't all be wet in, before they're in use. It's just one of those exchange problems. You see, Webster kind of slides it right right through Bradshaw's hands. That fumble's on the quarterback, but the ball is a little bit slick. Second down and 13 now for the Steelers. Here's Bradshaw looking deep. Swan's running a deep pattern. He fires. Swan dives at the ball at the 21-yard line. Swan ran the deep pad and then cut back. <laughs> In the booth with us right now is Mrs. Terry Bradshaw, JoJo Starbuck. JoJo, what do you think of all this? <laughs> well, I tell you, Very she, little apparently. It must be just another day at, at the plant because. Well, that's the replay. All right. It is pretty funny when you head 21 to nothing. Oh, the old man's going to be tonight there if we get kicked in the head. A little headache. Still no score. Tampa Bay and Kansas City. Third down and 13. So the Bills pour through in that play, and they knock down Bradshaw back of the 40-yard line of Buffalo, and that brings up fourth down. And here it is again as we see Buffalo get its first sack of the Pittsburgh quarterback. Well, again, this time Bradshaw's receivers weren't open, but he didn't have enough time. The pass rush has to improve. A whole lot of things have to change around, or they're liable to get blown right out of town. Williams, Kadish, and Sherman White all smoking on through. 
And so now with fourth down coming up, Cole Quinn is out in the field for one of his infrequent punting appearances. There's the snap. He angles for the near sideline. Moody lets it go out of bounds if it does. And it goes out of bounds at about the one yard line. So the Steelers really have it rolling right now with 423 left to play in the third quarter and Pittsburgh in the lead 21 to nothing. From their one yard line tries to crash out with Collier on the carry but the Steelers slam it right down. And the third quarter clock runs with 410 to play in the game and the Steelers in the lead 21 nothing. You know Don this is a type type of ball game where there is no type of brilliance as far as play selection is concerned that's going to get you out of a trap. The players are not playing up to their capabilities and they haven't been throughout the last two quarters. And if offensively they don't play well, no matter what you call it, it's going to work. Second down and 10 from the one yard line. Up there again as the Steelers converge. And now Joe Ferguson will have third down and about 10 coming up with the unhappy option of throwing from his end zone or running it again into the Pittsburgh defense and then having his punter kicking from 11 yards back rather than 15. Well, the way I look at it, you don't have an option because <laughs> you've got to throw the ball when you're 21 points behind. I don't care what yard line you're on if you want to get back in the ball game. I'll accept that. If you want to keep the score down, run it. All right. You got it. <laughs> Bills only one of 12 on third down conversions. Ferguson throws and it was an out pattern. Lewis was running a fly pattern. It's incomplete and now Rusty Jackson's going to have to hope for a good snap and a quick punt because the Steelers are going to be rushing hard. The Bills won't have the usual 15 yards the punter normally takes in his drop. They'll have about 11. Rusty Jackson lining up. The Steelers drop back T Bell and they put 10 fire snorting guys up front ready to move. Good job. He got it away and hit it well. He drives T Bell back to the 47 yard line. Bell is hemmed in. Excellent special teams play by Buffalo. Getting the ball away. Now a couple of the guys mixing it up here and we'll be back at Three River Stadium after this. When I was watching from the stands, I had no idea that he was kicked or that his helmet was off. But his brother, Craig, is sitting in front of me and he told me about it. And my mom in California told me how bad it looked on the close-up. That's the only way I knew. And it's good to see Lynn back, Bernadette. Yes, good it is. I was worried. He's all right. Well, yeah. you girls are going to the Super Bowl again, I guess. I hope. It's getting to be old business, isn't it? Thanks yeah. for coming by. Lots of good luck. Okay. Mrs. Terry Bradshaw and Mrs. Lynn Swan, JoJo and Bernadette, and right now the Pittsburgh Steelers have the ball second down and six coming up 32-yard line of the Buffalo Bills. Pittsburgh leading the game 21 to nothing, 2.15 to play. In the third quarter, they go to Thornton. He is a truck, Thornton, running hard down to the 30. Very difficult to execute any sort of a reverse play or or a trap play when, you, when you're playing in, in wet conditions. And right down there between the 30 and the 45, it has stayed wet throughout the ball game. Darden with those seven rushes. Today, Stallworth, John Stallworth has caught three passes for 26 yards, bringing the season total of 69 receptions, a new Steeler record. Third down and three now for Terry Bradshaw and the Steelers. delivers the money yards on a third down carry he drives ahead for five yards and a Steeler first down Isaiah Robertson number 58 knocked him down eight fifty left to play in Tampa Bay and in the rain Neil O'Donohue's field goal from 19 yards out keeps the Buccaneers three points up on Kansas City Chiefs looking to close with an eight made record on the year they've been hot in recent weeks the Bears beating St. Louis at Soldier Field, 21 to nothing now. It will be to no avail if Tampa Bay holds on. Now running it down to the 21-yard line, 
is Sidney Thornton. Shane Nelson was on the tackle. The Houston Oilers are going against the Philadelphia Eagles in their season finale today at the Astrodome. Of course, the Chargers and the Broncos ready to tee it up. We won't know until Tuesday morning, probably, New York time. And then, then the computers have to stay in condition or uh, everybody's back in the dark. Franco Harris has rushed for 80 yards today in 18 carries. Bradshaw, a deep drop. He's looking. He throws. Randy Grossman in a tight end going for the ball, but it's overthrown. On a second down and seven play, they go incomplete, so it'll be third down and seven. Some of those Steelers pump that iron. They let you see those muscles. Three guys in their offensive line bench press over 500. And they like to wear their short sleeve <laughs> jerseys, don't they? You can see Bradshaw's having a little problem finding anybody on this play. The ball was actually a little bit overthrown. That's a man he very seldom misses connection with. Randy Grossman is a fine receiver, and he's come, he's come to be a pretty fine blocker, too. Now the Steelers go third down and seven. Grossman's to the left side. Swan and Star with their flank. Bradshaw has time. He throws. Too much on it. He was going for Lynn Swan. And Swan had a step on the defense, but the ball came in high. Now he'd like to have been able to throw the ball where he wanted, but it was pretty good defense by the linebackers. Swan's on a crossing pattern. When you get a lot of time, you can afford to call crossing patterns. Pittsburgh's had that luxury all day long. It takes a long time to develop this pattern. Bradshaw gets enough time, but the linebackers drop in. He has to throw the ball over the top. Here's a 38-yard field goal attempt now with Cole Quinn holding. Matt Bauer will attempt it. He's got it up in the air. But he is wide to the right, so it's no good, and Buffalo takes over the ball as time runs out in the third quarter. From Pittsburgh, Buffalo, and Tampa Bay, you'll see the entirety of this game, but for the rest of our network, we're going to switch to the Kansas City-Tampa Bay game, which is coming down the stretch. Jay Randolph and Paul McGuire. Mike Webster, the All-Pro center, was drafted in the fifth round in that great draft year, 1974. And he is regarded, he was a unanimous selection to the Pro Bowl team. Players and coaches voting on it. Everybody voted for Mike Webster as the AFC center. Right now, it is first down and 10 for the Buffalo Bills, just outside their 20-yard line. Ferguson swept under. He had time to fall back, cock his arm, and then no time to reload because Joe Green was there and Dwight White was there. Don, they just took the left side of the offensive line and pushed him right back to Ferguson. He was trying to go on a little hook and go to Lewis. Pump fake. Now Lewis is down the field. Too late, boys. What you really worry about here is losing your quarterback with a shoulder separation when people that big fall on him on this hard artificial turf. Well, I'm sure it doesn't come up in Ferguson's mind. Uh, injuries being part of the ball game, but it, there are some questions that might be asked about, you know, this is the third game in a row that Buffalo has failed to put any points on the board offensively. They had a problem, and early in the season, they were really rolling up the points. Now, as they run out, Roland Hooks takes the ball out across the 20-yard line close to the 24. Brings the ball ahead for Buffalo and the Bills with 14-17 showing on the game clock, trailing in the game 21 to nothing. Have needed a big play all game long. It looked like they might get some when they came out throwing early and drove down the field their per first possession of the game. They kicked a field goal, but it was negated by a delay of game call. Five-yard penalty was marked off, and subsequently Buffalo's field goal attempt by Nicomeyer the second time was blocked. That's as close as they've been to a score. It's third down and seven now for the Bills. Ferguson takes a deep drop, swings the ball out. It's intercepted and lost. Lauren Taves had it and lost it. They're going to Mike Collier, but there was nothing there, and Lauren Taves very nearly had it. 
as Ferguson goes off. Had the play been complete, it would have been short of a first down. And people say, well, why do you throw it there? Well, you do because you don't have time to throw it to anybody else. Taves was all over. Collier was in perfect position to make the interception. They're covering them like blankets. And Rusty Jackson comes out once more to punt. Got nine punts underway, and there's his ninth in the air, and T-Bell ready to return it for a ninth time. Great punt returners, boy, they stand there and dance and weave a little bit, and all of a sudden, the stutter step, and they explode through a gap, and they can be gone, and T-Bell's one of them that can go the distance. We'll be back at Three River Stadium in a moment. Right on NBC. Live action, Franco Harris gets the call, runs into Shane Nelson. He advances the ball out across the 45-yard line on a first down carry. Harris is ahead for three yards for Pittsburgh. So the Steelers gearing up after that tough loss Monday night. Get a better idea just the overall class of this organization. That penalty call or the onside kick call, which the league office later ruled was an mis official's mistake. Never got an one thing in print from the Steelers about Buffalo. Buffalo. Well, the funny thing is Pittsburgh felt they shouldn't have left it into a situation that that one call could dictate the outcome. And I think that's that's what champions are like. And always is Art Rooney. That's Art standing up looking better than ever. One of the founding fathers of the National Football League along with George Hallis. And now his sons run the franchise and Nobody runs it better, any franchise. And uh, if you hadn't heard, it's unfortunate news that George Hallis Jr., not George Hallis Sr., George Hallis Jr. died at age 54 of a heart attack in Chicago. George Hallis Sr. going strong at 85. And his Bears right now are leading 21 to nothing on a very sad day for them. Straight ahead, the carry goes, and the Pittsburgh Steelers drive it ahead for another first down. On a third down and three carry, they get it, and the Steelers move the chain markers, get four new downs, and keep the clock running with 11.55 to play. Cincinnati, Jack Thompson just ran for a touchdown, John. Jack Thompson from Washington State. Uh, he might be the next great young quarterback. Uh, he's got all the tools, but he needs to do a little playing time, and when Kenny Anderson is ahead of you, the playing time is sparse. The throw in Samoan to Jack Thompson. Franco Harris closing in on yet another 100 yard day. He has 89 yards. Bradshaw throws on first down. And a perfect strike to John Stallworth, who steps out of bounds at the 32. So the Steelers have another first down. Bradshaw just rolls out a little bit to the left to give himself a better angle toward the sideline. It's a long throw, but it's in perfect timing with Stallworth just as he turns around. Bop, there comes the ball, how sweet it is. Starworth with his 200th career reception, fifth most in Steeler history. First down and 10, Pittsburgh at the 33-yard line of Buffalo. Thornton turns out wide and gets to the 30. Got two, it'll be second down and eight. Knocked down by Lucius Sanford, 57. You see the big power backs of Pittsburgh come out of the three points. Little cross buck. Thornton takes one, one step behind Franco. Doesn't have him as a lead blocker. It's another trap play. Field is still a little bit slippery. If you don't find a hole at first, you're going to have a little problem creating one. And the temperature is starting to drop in Pittsburgh. 21-16, New England rallying behind on a Don Calhoun touchdown run. Swing pass goes out to Franco. And Harris is to the 30 and no more. On a second down and eight play, it'll bring up third down and eight. It gets a little rough here in December, just like they like it in Pittsburgh for Steeler football. Kansas City trailing Tampa Bay. The Buccaneers with a playoff chance. They're in if they win that game. Baltimore hitting the slumping Giants 24 to 7 in the fourth quarter. San Francisco looking for its third win. It's second in a row, leading Atlanta. And the Bears leading St. Louis 21 to nothing. Now the Steelers on a third down and seven play go to three wide receivers. Carries 
to head to the 10 yard line. He is thrown back, but the Steelers are down close and challenging once again with 940 to play in the game. This is about as open as any receiver's been all day long. Swan gets inside Mario Clark. When he does so, the linebacker goes the other way. Bradshaw finally picks him out. He's got plenty of time to operate. No one was close early, but they all close in at the end. And now for the Steelers. They're leading 21 to nothing. Here we go, Harris. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Well, Harris busts in with his 12th touchdown of the season. Now that's just like you draw them up on the board. When they get down there, you know they're going to trap, but it doesn't seem to change a thing. Take a look. Jerry Mullins pulls from his right guard position, knocks the right tackle out of the way, and Franco goes untouched into the end zone. So Harris with that first up the middle, John, gets 100 yards for the day and another touchdown. Matt Farr's extra point is once again right there. And so the Steelers have command of the game. They haven't won now if it's they did not long ago. They lead it 28 to the bar, taken downfield by Keith Moody. He's to the 20. And out across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Rick Moser on the special teams play as Franco Harris puts the cape on as the temperature is dropping. Bowl games coming up on NBC. Christmas Day. The University of Pittsburgh versus Arizona at 3.30 Eastern time in the Fiesta Bowl. And then the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. Top-ranked Ohio State, third-rated USC with the national championship on the line in the Rose Bowl at 4.30 Eastern time. And that night at 8 o'clock, John, you and I will be down at the Orange Bowl in Miami as unbeaten Florida State, ranked fourth in the country, 11-0 on the year, goes against fifth-rated Oklahoma. The Bills go to the run. Mike Collier takes it across the 35-yard line. John, what about the Bills now on offense with Joe Ferguson, the fact that they scored so much, and now all of a sudden their offense just has dried up? Right now, I mean, confidence is, a, is, a, is an elusive factor. Sometimes when you're going real well, everything seems so easy, and just a few bad breaks start to creep into your offense. All of a sudden, you wonder if you'll ever score another touchdown. That's the way it's been for Buffalo, and it doesn't take a whole lot to have that happen. They've got to find offense in line. But they haven't been able to operate today. And when they don't get control of the line of scrimmage, nobody can do anything offensively. So Tampa Bay ends its three-game losing streak with a 3-0 win in the rain over Kansas City. And Tampa Bay wins the NFC Central Division. Allier takes the swings fast, gets out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. They list Franco Harris at 6'2", 225, but you stand next to him, he looks like an offensive tackle. He's more like 6'4", 240. And no, you know, people don't really take a look at his speed and say he's a yeah. speed back. But if you if you ever watched him outrun uh, Tom Darden for Cleveland for 70 yards, and Darden didn't great gain a stride, if anything, he lost one. Uh, <laughs> That's right. He there could be really. no doubt about his speed. He's like Earl Campbell. You don't need those little breakaway backs. You've got people like Harris and Campbell. They can outrun a defense in addition to run over one. The Bills on first down go to Mike Collier. He gets it across the 40-yard line. The backup quarterbacks are working out now for the Steelers. Kruzek and Stout. NFL 79 from New York with Brian Gumbel and Mike Adam Lee will be coming up next with NFL Report. The concluding week of regular season play. I think you'll be watching a lot of the regulars coming off the field in the last six, seven, seven and a half minutes. Joe Green just made his exit. The terrible towels are waving. And the Steelers dig in. Second down and eight coming up now for the Buffalo Bills. Here they come. Gary Butler going for the ball, bumped off the play by Ron Johnson. Ferguson doesn't have time to do anything more than just go back quickly as he can and unload because if he tries to set up and look things over he's gone that's one of the few times today that Pittsburgh has sent seven or eight people after the quarterback because they haven't needed to uh, and even when they were man to man uh, Blunt and Johnson covered the receivers as well as they could be covered and there was nowhere to go with the ball 
Baylor defense has really looked sharp. And of course, they're coming off one of the hardest hitting games of the season last Monday night against the Houston Oilers. Pittsburgh now the victory today wins the AFC Central, ties Dallas's record of making the playoffs eight consecutive years. Most importantly, we'll have a week off now. They get those injured people back and ready. Ferguson gets time this time, throws it too hard. I guess, John, you've played long enough to certainly know when you're standing back there and you've been hit a number of times in the game, when you do have time, you're still waiting for that shoe to come down. You bet. It's like uh, those I got you's. You never know when the second one's coming, but you know it's coming. The got you's. <laughs> Mike Kruzek has taken snaps from Mike Webster. He's getting set to come in the game the next time Pittsburgh has the ball. P. Bell is back again. The 10th punt he's taken from Rusty Jackson and the 10th one he's returned. Boy, there is a special teams play. Number 91, Ken Johnson. Big guy can run. But can they get it in the end zone? That's what they need right now. Often. 46 yard punt. Dealers get back to the ball. Kruzek comes out. We take a break in the action here at Pittsburgh. The punt now by Rusty Jackson downfield to T Bell. Another penalty marker down. And Bell gets the ball across the 35 yard line. You talk, John, about the confidence factor, and I guess that is a very vital thing. When things are going good, everything seems to be in gear. And John, I think what really happens is rather than doing your own job, you start doing your other your friend's job. And People lose confidence in one another, not only confidence in themselves. And until everybody gets back on page one and starts reading from page one through the end of the book, oftentimes that confidence factor never gets back. Well, it'll be till next August before the Bills get it underway again in the preseason. They'll have, a, they'll have a lot of time to regroup, and I'm sure they'll get a good draft. And that could put them in a good, a good position to contend next year, but not today. On the run back, Buffalo, 53. Face mask, first down. Those guys, those guys on the punt team must be getting tired. You know, that's no, no picnic running up and down that field, getting knocked yeah. around. That's right. Ruzek and the Steelers come out on offense, first and 10, the Buffalo 47 yard line. 6.39 to play. <laughs> Here is Greg Hawthorne, their number one draft choice from Baylor. A lot of people thought he was the best back in college football coming into the, out of the draft. He had a hip injury, and he was the last player picked in the first round. The Steelers could afford that luxury. You bet. He's, he's, he was a perfect example of what Pittsburgh can afford because they are so talented. They could allow him to, to get his hip well, to take some time off, not play a lot this year, and in the future they feel he'll help them a lot. Harry Bradshaw and Joe Green. Second Jerry's head out. Boy, he really got a shot in the head. Came right back and played a great game still. Cut! Cut! Hawthorne with a lot of explosion comes out quickly and hits down to the 40-yard line on a second and five carry. Jay Nelson made the knockdown for Buffalo. Along with nose tackle Mike Kadish. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers make it to the playoffs. John McKay saw it dangling. Thought it might get away. <laughs> his defense hung in there all year long. His offense was a little sporadic, but his defense did play when they had to. If you shut somebody out, you ought to get to go to the playoffs. One of the writers down there wrote that the Buccaneers gave Chicago a thread of hope which the Bears turned into a rope and tried to hang him back. Kruzak running, he's going to take off first down and more. And Mike Kruzak is down to the 17-yard line. Mike is saving nothing for the next play. He hasn't had much action this year, and when he gets some, he's going to take advantage of it. Kruzak had three rushes for minus two yards up till now in this season. Well, he got a pretty good pass rush from Hutchinson, who's playing for him his first time today 
eluded that, picked up a first down. They've still got the ball. Just under five minutes to play. Get down there, Mike. 22 yards downfield, and now the Steelers go first and 10 as rain starts to fall hard here in Pittsburgh. Running with the ball is Anthony Anderson, a rookie from Temple, who's averaging seven yards a rush in his first season. Boy, the Steelers have players on top of players. The problem is, how do you, they don't have enough positions out here to let everybody play. You're playing behind Blyer and Thornton and, and Harris. Your playing time's going to be low. Rain is really coming down now. The wind is blowing. The temperature is dropping. Playoff weather in Pittsburgh. You wondered when a few people might get up and start heading for the exits, but until now, they've been here having a great time. They have. Now we've got another terrible foul. Second down and four. Hawthorne runs hard. And gets down to about the nine-yard line. Jeff Nixon and Steve Freeman knocked him down. Hawthorne is 6'3", 220 pounds. Had a dislocated hip in college. But he is fully well. This is the heir apparent to Franco Harris, they say. But I think Franco's going to be doing it for some years to come. <laughs> he doesn't look ready to, to sack it into me. 100 yards today, two touchdowns. Steelers in the lead, 28 nothing with 2.54 to play. carries the ball right down inside the 10-yard line to about the H. John Brody is heading down to the Steelers locker room. Spraying a little champagne on old John down there. Fourth down coming up and inches to go for the first down. So the Steelers look for the signal from the sideline. Go after it, says Coach Noel. So they'll run the ball once again as the clock winds down now close to the two-minute warning. Steelers are just waiting for two minutes. And there's a timeout on the field now as the two-minute warning is given. So Mike Kruzek comes over. When we return, he'll have a fourth. Doesn't know it's raining. Here's a handoff. Hawthorne drives the ball down to the nine-yard line. It was a fourth down and one-foot carry. If he needed that for the first time, we'll see if he got it. This could be the Steelers' first shutout of this season. They can keep the Bills from scoring, and the Buffalo Bills defense holds, and Pittsburgh did not get the first down. Chuck knows some advice, but to no avail right now as Buffalo takes over the ball. First and 10, the game clock showing 156 to play. Cincinnati leading Cleveland 13-12 in the fourth quarter. New England leading Minnesota 24-16 in the fourth quarter. Tampa Bay has beaten Kansas City and won the NFC Central Division. 3-0 Buccaneers over the Chiefs. Baltimore beating the Giants 31-7. Atlanta now leading San Francisco 31-21. Ferguson throws in the end zone and Collier loses the ball. Incomplete pass. Good possibility that the Miami Dolphins will be playing here at Pittsburgh in an AFC divisional playoff game. A wild card next week. It's going to be interesting to see who will be in that. The final weekend of regular season play. Oakland with a distinct shot. Denver with even a better one. Cleveland Browns still in the running. If they can win, if they lose at Cincinnati, that's gone. Seven teams are in. Six teams are hoping for those final three spots. On second down and ten, Ferguson stands in, throws hard, and he gets his man. Jerry Butler catches the ball. He's a racehorse when he gets it. So quick. Butler with the reception for a big yardage. J.T. Thomas finally knocked him down. We'll watch it on replay. Boy, Butler is just a strider. Cruises through that secondary. Dropping the throw is Ferguson. Down in the secondary. They're pointing at Dirt Winston. 
number 53. Next Sunday, football second season starts here on NBC with exclusive coverage of the AFC wild card game. The loser goes home while the winner advances into divisional playoff competition. The AFC wild card game following NFL 79 next Sunday here on NBC. The call will go against the Steelers. Here it is from Fred Silva. Holding number 54. Would like to avert the shutout, but they're a long way from it. 123 to play. Pittsburgh 28, Buffalo nothing. Wing pass goes out to Collier. He gets out of bounds, stopping the clock with him. Ferguson rolling out. He throws. He put uh, full smoke on that one. Hadn't lost anything off his fastballs. John Stallworth was voted by his teammates as the Steelers' most valuable player. Joe Ferguson with third down and seven coming up, takes the deep drop, stands in, cocks his arm, gets it away, intercepted. The ball is picked off by Pittsburgh and run back inside the 25-yard line. Larry Anderson, a second-year defensive back from Louisiana Tech. There he goes off the field. He's going to keep that ball. So with one minute left, Pittsburgh has the ball back. You'll see Ferguson under very heavy pressure just before the big Steeler defenders came down on him. He releases the ball. Dwight White almost gets him before he got it away and then right to Anderson. He knows where to go with it. Looking for touchdown time as he takes off straight ahead, but he's knocked down inside the 25-yard line of the 24. So Joe Ferguson, who's had a great season despite some off weeks in the recent weeks, at one point in the season, his quarterback rating was 122. They go to the run, and Moser takes it straight ahead down to the 16-yard line. Jeff Nixon makes the knockdown. Second year back from Rhode Island, Rick Moser. Second down and two coming up now for the Pittsburgh Steelers after the eight-yard gain by Moser. The Steelers on the sideline. Their coaching staff with reason to celebrate as Pittsburgh will be heading into the playoffs with a head of steam. End up. Anderson runs with the ball. Turns the corner. Anthony Anderson takes it. Chuck Knox assistants, Tom Catlin, Jack Donaldson, Steve Moore, Elijah Pitts, Ray Prochaska, Kay Stevenson, Jim Wagstaff, and Willie Zappalak. The Bills will finish the year seven and nine. Seconds, five, four, three, and off the ticks. And the Steelers for a sixth consecutive year win the AFC Central Division title. Another divisional championship for the Steelers as Coach Noel goes off. A decisive victory, a 28-0 win after a tough loss Monday night at Houston. So now the Steelers will get a week off. They'll not play next Sunday. They'll watch the wild card game on NBC. And they'll get ready to tee it up right here at Three River Stadium. Quite possible.